see. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of April, and I'm Kathleen, and this is Kathleen's Trot and Trail. Here to talk to you a little bit today, um, mostly about stitching, just a few other little things on the plate. Um, let's give um, let's give you some updates on the flooding and um, um, how that's all going. Um, lots of recovery. We have a road out, um, so we were pretty much socked into our subdivision, which only has one way in and out to the highway. Um, we were socked in for about two weeks. Um, we had the um, Department of Roads had kind of put some back roads in, or there were some back roads that they made accessible to us, and so we were able to come and go, you know, if necessary, um, on those roads, but it took probably an extra 20-25 minutes to, to, to get anywhere, just to be on those roads, and then they're all dirt roads, and so they didn't hold up really well, and if we had any amount of rain, and with a combination of big trucks and all of that kind of thing it it was a little bit dicey um but you know we, we could go we could get out and brian got out um to work and was able to come and go especially in four-wheel drive he has a truck and so in four-wheel drive no problem um i didn't leave a whole lot i i did um go a couple different times to um the store and i think i met one friend for lunch one of the days, but um, it was kind of a big deal to get, you know, to get in and out. So last Friday, I actually went out to rug hooking. We we have open rug hooking pretty much every Friday, and I went out to rug hooking, and um, Tet took the back roads in, and that was the first time I'd been out to rug hooking probably in a good six weeks um, with a combination of the kids being home on break and, and the storm and everything. And... Um, took the back roads out and then came back that way and um, the back roads were closed because they had opened up our road. And so um, it's a it's a nice road. It's just a, a little skinny one, you know, one car only kind of a road. And so you kind of have to, it's a little dicey getting in and out and making a right hand turn out onto the road or a left hand turn into the subdivision. And you have to be careful, um, move over and watch out for cars coming because there are not at this point there aren't two lanes but but that will be that will be here eventually and as long as people are careful then you know we'll be okay so that's really good um, our friends and next door neighbors um, who have the farm out west or south of us and and west um, are making have made strides with their home that was flooded on the farm and I'm sorry my hair is driving me crazy today um, and so they're they're back living in the home. The basement flooded. They had lots of help, um, and um, lots of lots of volunteers and lots of people um, coming. They they actually have the same anniversary that Brian and I do, and it was our our twenty second anniversary last Friday, and we actually met them out not accidentally at the we were both couples were having dinner at the same restaurant on Friday night. And so we had a chance to talk with them a little bit. And so these are the, the children, the adult children who are our age of our neighbors who live next door. And um, they said that the day before they had like 40 or 50 kids from the high school um, um, out to help and um, doing a lot, a lot of cleanup kind of stuff. So that's great. Still no word on when they're going to be able to plant or if they're going to be able to plant. And I think they've lost... Uh, maybe 15 cattle at this point um, they don't have a large herd but you know it, that was that was kind of sad but um, so there's there's recovery going on and there's you know um, definitely we've seen a lot of good in terms of people um, helping and doing that kind of thing and it's yeah so still don't have word on our backyard or our back 40 um, it's covered with sand in some places, about eight feet of sand. And um, at this point, we still don't have a permit, nor do we have a community permit to move that sand back into the river. And I'm not sure that it, I'm not sure that's what should be done with it anyway. And so we're kind of waiting on word from the Army Corps of Engineers as to what we could potentially do with that. Um, Brian did some cleanup. We, we lost probably a quarter of our, maybe a third of our backyard is completely 
you know, under sand, under feet and feet and feet of sand. And so he was able to kind of get into most of the garden and um, clear out the debris and get that cleaned up. And so it's it's ready for planting and we need to find out if we can actually plant. Um, we need to find out about toxi toxicity in the soil with the flood. So um, around here, this isn't something we normally do, but it's big in Nebraska to hunt. I think they're called moral mushrooms or morel mushrooms. Um, and they're, they, they grow wild here all over and people this time of year, um, go on the hunt for those. And the, it's been, they put out the national, I don't know if it was in the National Weather Service or the news or whoever, but somebody put out that those are going to be highly toxic this year and to not pick those and not eat those. So I'm not, I'm just not sure about planting in the soil. So we, I need to find that out. Um, but anyway, it tomorrow, so tomorrow, Caitlin is flying in from Chicago and in the morning, and if she makes it, <laughs> and then we were, she and I were going to drive up to Sioux Falls to see Maddie on Friday, but um, we're under a blizzard warming at the moment, and so we are supposed to get several inches here in Omaha. It was 80 degrees yesterday, um, and tomorrow we're supposed to have a blizzard. Um, it's, we're supposed to get several inches in Omaha and Sioux Falls is supposed to get two to two and a half feet of snow. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to be driving up to Sioux Falls. Um, you know, maybe we can find a way to go up on Saturday if it clears out pretty quickly. Um, and we just got word that American or Delta, and, or no, United and Frontier are offering everyone who has tickets to come to the plains. So I think it's Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, Kansas, um, Minnesota, I think. So it'd be North Dakota, Minnesota. Everyone who has airline tickets to those places today, tomorrow and Friday, they're offering um, a refund to, um, or you know, a allowing people to reschedule for no fee. So. Caitlin is flying American, and we haven't heard that from American at this point, but I think if they put that out there, she'll probably change her flight and not, not come in. There's still flooding going on. The Missouri is still flooding. Our river is not, but keeping a close eye on that. We heard that um, Gavin's Point, the Army Corps of Engineers, was going to start releasing water, more water at Gavin's Point again today, and um, now, the thing that we do have going for us is there are no more ice jams on the river, but there's still a lot of snow up north. And um, then with this potential blizzard, and uh, we're supposed to get rains and have high winds, um, there could be more flooding. So we're just kind of crossing our fingers, and at this point, I think we're okay as far as our river goes. I have glue hanging from me. Um, but we'll have to see. So we're just kind of hoping for the best on that. Meantime, I have been stitching. Um, I have been uh, having a lot of fun doing some finishing, doing some stitching. The first thing that I did was on Saturday, my friend Colleen and I um, had the opportunity to take a workshop out at Reflections and with um, Kathy Haberman of Hands On Designs. And so we had a little bit of homework to do before and it was stitching, doing the stitching. I guess I can't really show you the before stuff but doing the stitching on this little mattress pillow finish and this little tray. And so we stitched that beforehand and then we went to class and Kathy taught us how to make up this tray and how to finish this little mattress pillow. Lots of really good tips and tricks and let's see how does that go like that. Um, and then we got, she gift, she or Julie, one of the two, we, we got lots of, it was a wonderful class. If you ever have the opportunity to take a class with Kathy Haberman, I highly recommend it. I, I have to be really honest that I kind of, you know, I do my own finishing, most of my own finishing, and I, I kind of have the attitude of I know how to finish, I don't really need, you know, I, I, I had that attitude before going into the class, like, I, I, I probably won't learn much in this class. I learned a ton and lots of different, you know, kind of different and new ways of doing things. And um, Kathy Haberman is number one, unbelievably creative. And you can just see 
she's just one of those people where the creative juices are always going. You know, she's always thinking up new things and coming up with new ways of doing things. And, um, but she's just super, she's very kind and very humble, um, uh, about herself and about, you know, her abilities, even though they're amazing. And, and it was just, it was a really fun class. It was a big class. It was crowded. It was, we were kind of shoulder to shoulder with everyone, but it worked out really well. And Julie was a wonderful hostess and just, just put on a great, a great show or a, a great class, a great workshop, um, brought in lunch for everyone. I thought the fee was really probably should have been much more for all we got. So, um, the pins came and these pins were made specially or this pin was made specially for Kathy by just another button company company and um, so it's like the little tomato pin cushion with the pin in it isn't that cool it's just so cute and a little um, spool of thread and a little star flower and so that and then so in class then we learned how to applique on the tomato and finish up the pillow and then Kathy also provided us with the wool roving stuffing to stuff these, which I have to tell you guys is expensive stuff and so nice for finishing. And I, I'm, I ordered some and I'm going to, that's how I'm going to start you. That's what I'm going to start using to stuff my smalls because it is, it just gives a really nice sturdy, it really holds its shape. It's, I, uh. So anyway, that was a lot of fun. Um, we also, as a little extra, we made these. Um, she provided us with all of the all of the parts and she taught us how to make these, and we we stitched these up. And um, so it was a great it was a great class. It was lots of fun. Um, along with or speaking of Kathy Hoverman and hands on designs, I finished and then FFO'd um, more chocolate bunnies. And so this is my finish. And so. Um, I stitched this again and, and none of the called for, um, I just used what I had. So yeah, I had this frame and I had some ideas of how I wanted it to look and, um, it, I'm very pleased with how it came out. Just, it was a very simple finish and yeah, so I really like that. I have that sitting in my, um, sitting in my front curio cabinet with, um, next to a little bunny that is. A little kind of ceramic bunny that is the same color as this frame so it looks it looks really cute um, then of course I spent a little bit of money <laughs> um, yeah my whole thing of you know stitch stitch from stash and nine stitch nine challenge and all of that Especially with the flood, you know, once the flood happened and we kind of went through all of that, and I, I need to stop using that as an excuse because our house did not flood, but it was a little bit tra of a traumatic experience going through it. And, and so I'm like, well, I, I deserve this or it's okay, I can buy this or I can start this new thing or whatever. I, it's ridiculous. But um, of course, while we were there and during, you know, during the workshop, during times when folks were working and if you were finished with your part, you could shop in the shop, and, and there was a, um, a trunk show of Kathy's designs. Um, and I bought several of those, but um, one of the big things that I purchased, not having to do with Kathy, is I purchased um, the chart and all the floss and the fabric for the villages of Hawk Run Hollow, because my friend Colleen wants to do the houses of Hawk Run Hollow. And I said, okay, well, if you do that, I'll I'll, let's get together once a week and work on, you know, Hawk Run Hollow pieces. You do that and I'll finish up my Shores of Hawk Run Hollow or my Halloween Hawk Run Hollow. Well, instead I bought the Villages of Hawk Run Hollow. I also bought Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow. Did not kit that one up. And then I bought um, a new Plum Street, a new Plum Street sampler um, called Liberty, Welcome Liberty. And um, just a really cute, I don't know if it was a market release or not, but it was one I hadn't seen before. And I just fell in love with it. And I'm kind of getting that itch to stitch, um, you know, kind of 4th of July, Independence Day kind of thing. So anyway, I didn't bring those down to show you. But um, okay, I'm going to pause the video here and go on to number two.